Hey guys, T4 Immersive 3 here. I'm gonna show you how to do motion capture in Blender with a 360 Connect. So we'll be using that other model as an example for this tutorial, but you should be able to apply the same concepts and methods in this tutorial to any type of character you want, like a minifigure. So this tutorial is gonna be broken into two sections, the first part covering the hardware. Um, you're gonna need the Xbox 360 Connect sensor itself, as well as an adapter cable that you can plug into your computer. The second section will be on the software, and you're gonna need the Microsoft SDK, the Delicode Animate application and Blender add-on, and the real-time animation Blender add-on. And I'll put links to all of those in the description below. So I did wanna put a disclaimer in the beginning of the video. If you have a Xbox uh, One Connect or the Connect V2, the second generation version of the Connect, it looks a little more boxy than the Xbox 360 version. Uh, I would highly recommend checking out Remington Creative's tutorial on how to do it for that version of the Kinect. Um, as far as the 360 though, um, I couldn't find a tutorial, so and I had to figure out some of this on my own, so it's a little bit different, and that's why I'm creating this tutorial, as well as uh, how to use it in Blender and um, how to use it for animation. So if you have the 360 Kinect, then all you need to buy for this tutorial is the PC adapter cable. Um, unless you already have that for some reason, but it's only 13 bucks. Um, the parts for the Connect, uh, the sensor itself is a lot more expensive if you have the V2 version, but the 360 is cheaper. So once you have your computer adapter cable and your Xbox 360 Connect, go ahead and plug in the Connect sensor into the adapter cable, and then plug the adapter cable into a nearby power outlet, which will provide power to the Connect, and the Connect will send back data through the USB connection in your computer, and it has to be a USB 3.0. So we're going to go to Microsoft's website and download the Connect V1 SDK, and then go to NIMate's website and download the application for Windows and the Blender add-on for 2.80 and later. So once you get those downloaded, go ahead and open the NIMate desktop application installer. Uh, Windows will ask you for permission. My screen just went blank. It's not showing that but I'm going through the end user license agreement, and then I'm unchecking all the boxes except for the OpenNI1 uh, drivers. We only need the ones for the Xbox 360, and I'm gonna leave on the desktop shortcut so I can open it later. And I'm gonna hit next, and then there's a set of instructions on how to use unsigned drivers with Windows, and you can take a screenshot of this, and I will go through this later. So before I reboot my computer, I'm going to run the installer for the Connect V1 SDK, uh, give Windows permission to install it, Go ahead and wait for it to install. Once that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and type run, Windows key and then run. And then I'm gonna type in shutdown slash R slash O and that will set my computer into the correct reboot cycle. So once Windows 10 reboots, we're gonna hit the option troubleshoot and then advanced options and startup settings. And the setting we're looking for is to disable driver signature enforcement. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit restart. And once it restarts, we're gonna see the new menu. Um, we have to hit this key seven to disable driver signature enforcement. So once Windows reboots, I'm just gonna run the NIMate installer again and go past the step that we stopped at for the reboot cycle. And then we're gonna go ahead and start NIMate. And it's gonna tell us that the driver uh, set up for the connect is not right. So we're gonna hit okay. Open the device manager options by hitting Windows key, type in device manager. And then we're gonna open up the options for the Microsoft Connect and then change the driver to the unsigned driver using the steps shown. So we're gonna go ahead and open up NIMate to give it a test and you have to open it from the Windows system tray, click on the icon with the right click and hit control interface. And then there's an option for skeleton tracking, make sure that's on. And then it should start drawing in a skeleton if you stand up in front of it. Uh, you can see this little wireframe that it's drawing, that's what the Kinect is seeing. Um, there's also a 3D view that if you don't want to see everything else, it simplifies it. And there's another setting that 
if you don't want to keep opening the NI Mate from the systems tray, uh, if you right click on the icon when you start it, uh, hit preferences and then go to the startup options and uncheck hide to tray, hit apply and OK. And then it should just open right up next time you start it. So originally I tried to do this with the other tutorial for the Connect V2 and there was a link on Remington Creative's website to a rig that he had set up that um, matches the data from the NIMate application to the Blender uh, rig and I tried that but as you can see uh, the not all the points were moving and tracking and this is because in the V2 version of the Connect they added a couple other things that they can track like fingers and hands so, so you can see here the wrist is not moving even though uh, I'm moving around and the NI mate seeing it but the not all the points are mapping correctly onto the rig. So I ended up making my own rig uh, for the Connect 360 version the V1 and uh, I'll go ahead and open up an example here I'm just going to show you the data points um, that are in this rig are kind of like the um, the ones from the V2 rig, but I deleted the wrists. And these data points, they have to be the same exact name as the name in the NI made application. So you'll see, like, when, I think it's under skeleton tracking. If you open up that in the NI made application, you'll see the names. And those names have to match exactly, or the NI made blender add on is not going to know what uh, points you're talking about when you try to tell it to look for data. Um, so then I'm just going to show you here that there's a source rig that is stretched to with using um, bone constraints. It stretches to uh, the data points and then I have a retargeted rig that has bone constraints to copy the rotations of the source rig so that my bones don't have to be the same size as the source rig. And so I'll just turn those on. And then uh, I also added a copy rotation for the uh, armature for the body and the uh, copy translation or location for the body armature so that the entire rig that's parented will move instead of just like the bone. And so I'll go ahead and hit the start button on the NIMATE Blender add-on and go ahead and show you that uh, he does move whenever I'm moving in real space here. So uh, that's how you set up the uh, Xbox 360 Connect to um, rig a character in Blender. And the next section we can talk about how to use another add-on called the real-time animation add-on to turn these motions into keyframes. So in order to do the real-time animation and keyframe those motions, you're going to have to download the real-time animation Blender add-on. You can either get it from the creator's website or you can get it from GitHub. I'll put links to both in the description below. Go ahead and download that. And then I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to add the, the add-on into Blender. There's plenty of other tutorials on how to add add-ins and plugins for Blender. Um, so go ahead and follow whatever tutorial you want for that. Once you get it installed and added into Blender, then um, you have to hit N to open the add-on menu, go down to real time animation, and you have to select all of the empties that is, uh, the data is being read in from the connect. So all of the data points that are represented as empties, select all of them. And then you can select the L and the R, um, options to keyframe the location and the rotation of the empties. But it's very important. You have to hit, you have to select only the empties when you do that. Uh, not the source rig, not the mo the retargeted rig has to be just the empties uh, because that's the only thing that's that's going to be animated. Um, and you'll see that I'll unhide my source rig and, and retargeted rig. And you'll see that those follow the motion of the empties just because they're constrained to those empties. So that's how you are able to use the motion from the mocap as uh, animated data. And you can make an animation from that. I'll just be touching up the animation a little bit here at the end. If you want to stay to the end of the video, you can see the finished my finished uh, result. But um, I will say, um, if you want to go ahead and uh, check out any of my other tutorials or my other videos, there's useful information in those too. 
Uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get more uh, awesome content. And um, I am starting to use the community tab more. So uh, if keep your eye out for that so that you can um, get more sneak peeks and uh, more information about upcoming videos. And I'm going to be doing some polls and things to get some more feedback from you guys. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you in the next video.